they will have that to work with. But they do seem to be lacking a little bit of damage now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Marcy can pull out a lot of damage once she has like a BKB basher. Uh, until then, very much lacking. So they're going to need something they can make up for that. And they need something that can deal with the wind range, not just like a right click. I think heavy burst damage is going to be necessary right here i don't know who fixes all of their problems for them though uh i would normally suggest something like a, a void spirit here but against like tanky heroes like tree protector or dawnbreaker your void spirit doesn't do enough damage just like instantly burst them oh. that is not what i was expecting <laughs> uh it is fairly good against these heroes though if you really think about it i mean the, the smoke cloud uh the, being able to blink strike on top of the wind ranger drop a smoke cloud afterwards uh if you get on top of tree and protector it just stops them from doing practically anything mm -hmm. very difficult to initiate onto them you will need to build a mantis style in order to deal with like the roots coming out both in the tree and protectors ultimate and uh his first hit out of invis once he gets his aganum shard but i don't mind it here but it's definitely not a North American hero. It's something that you see out of SEA, but definitely not NA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just not a hero that's been popping up too much. Maybe you get a little bit more damage and control. I do have some durability concerns now with this lineup that I highly doubt will be solved with whatever the last pick is, because it's looking like it might be their mid laner. But if you're sneaky enough, right? If, if your Riki can sort of pick his targets effectively, then maybe you can just completely sidestep that problem and get your damage in anyway. That that makes it a little bit tougher, though. Okay. Yeah, I was out of here at the day. He has an easy time putting damage in. He does have way too much armor to deal with. Uh, that Definitely is, makes things trickier. That is the Kataro Terrorblade as well, a hero he is unbelievably familiar with. So now what is the call here? Moving into the final phase of the band's cringe crew. Removing the bat. So yeah, with the TB picked up, your Dawnbreaker is not going to move to the one. So you can be pretty certain she's going to play the three instead, right? Yeah. Uh, almost certain it's going to be a uh, three Dawnbreaker. Uh, maybe four if you run a three wind range. That's pretty unlikely. They get rid of the zoo. So I was thinking that it might be an okay pick for cringe crew. You got extra mana that the Crystal Maiden's providing. You get magical burst damage that'll take down the TB. Uh, but it feels a little bit too dimensional uh, for this game. Chenopin now banned out last yeah. here on the side of Cringe Crew. So just working about on getting rid of like uh, heavy magical damage and burst on the side of uh, Infamous, I suppose. Right. Yeah, I don't really think it would have taken Zeus. I don't know what fits here, though. Something like Lena, uh, at a glance, might yeah. be decent. But then I don't think you have enough front line either. Like, the only hero that's going to be standing in front of beginning fights is Marcy. I think you need someone who can go in and start things for you. And Zeus doesn't feel that. Lena doesn't feel that either. Ah. Maybe something like an Ember Spirit? They banned the Storm, so they're thinking along maybe similar lines. And The Ember is... It's still not enough burst damage for the TB, though. Like... Your lack of hard lockdown means a lot of times this TB is just going to be able to get off Asunder. Well, they're uh, going to go for it, though. Not sure if they had too many better options, I suppose, but yeah. yeah. How do you kill the t How do you do enough damage, first of all, to just burst him down? Then how do you keep him locked down long enough to prevent the Sunder? It feels like it's going to be kind of tough for them, but... But like I said, I don't think they had too many better options. If you go for more damage, you have no maneuverability. If you go for more maneuverability, you don't have the damage to kill him anyway. Yeah, they've kind of boxed themselves into a corner here. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, wow. rounding that with Huskar. That's, that feels a little rude, but... uh, Well, Infamous infamous are not here to make friends, Neff. They're here, they're here to win Dota games, I guess. Oh man. Huskar, how to round out your draft. 24 pick Huskar. I feel like it's pretty good here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be able to knock uh, the Ember Spirit and uh, the Ricky Wave Beam with your Q. They are going to struggle to actually burst through the, the amount of HP region that Huskar has as well. Like, uh, again, we, we talked about the lack of burst, but just the Terrorblade. Uh, it's even more of an issue with this Huskar. You can't finish him off. You just go to run a train on your team. All he needs is a BKB. And I think he's going to run away with this game. So. I'm with Infamous here, game number two here, man. I yeah. was a little bit hesitant even before I saw that Huskar pick him, came out. Now that I actually see it, 
Uh, you've got the bonus armor from the tree protector as well. I don't think they're going to be able to get through this guy. If it's all the way, baby. It was I'm bandwagoning. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to bandwagon, the team that's got three straight wins is certainly not a bad pick. But yeah, before it felt concerning. Now with the Huskar last pick, it feels like the door has just been slammed in Cringe Crew's face because no, no one's going to have a great lane here. And Neff, I'm just realizing something looking as we are loading in here. Sunlight took the Marana, Flea ended up on the Marcy, so they still lane together, they could switch up who actually gets the farm as they please, but just based on who took what, it looks like core Marana and support Marcy. Good sticker on his profile, Futaro there, the Team Spirit sticker, that was cool. Although, yeah, when stickers came out, everybody was talking about, it's like, nobody's using these, so th no, there, there you go. No, I'm being sarcastic, I disliked it oh you disliked it well you might as well use them if you got them right i mean i have a hollow beast coast ultra rare if anyone wants to buy it off of me i'm taking offers 500 bucks he will be in the cvs pharmacy parking lot at <laughs> 5 p.m please do not be late please pay in cash please do not look Neff in the eye <laughs> Look at me in the eye by my hollow beast coast. <laughs> if Mr. Coast finds out that I'm selling the, the beast coast hollow, though, he's going to have words with me. Yeah. Nobody tell him. Don't worry. They'll never know. Mm -hmm. They don't They don't play until later phases anyway. They, they won't be paying attention. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. No one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Coast is not, <laughs> is not watching. But hey, here we he's go. He's playing Pokemon right now. Uh... He's not going to be watching this. That game just came out, which I barely had the chance to play. Uh, but I love Dota, so. Dota over That's Pokemon. Nice, nice. It's a cope. <laughs> it's a cope. I could be playing Pokemon right now. What am I doing? The game is getting started here. Bounty runes spawn up. 2-2 two -two split. No funny business really on either side, but... We shall see if Cringe Crew are going to be able to make something work here with the Ember and the Riki, because... Uh, well, you know, we, we don't really have a lot of faith in it, F, but always uh, very much ready to be shown how wrong I am with relation to Dota. Happens pretty damn often. But... I don't think you're going to be wrong this time, yeah. my friend. I have faith in the Ricky. I don't have faith in this Ember Spirit matchup. Once uh, Zabat hits like level 3, as long as he doesn't get too owned by the Ember Spirit until then, he's going to be just fine. We'll see just how hard Sebas wants to try and bully here. He is going to take a little bit of damage in the early stages, as you mentioned, but... The levels will come, the Burning Spears will start to become a problem for Suits, and... And of course, the first point of Berserker's blood will already... Like, alongside his Tango, like, 13 HP regen a second. Suits isn't yeah, going to be able to trade effectively with him. All you've really got is your Slide of Fist, and that's on a much longer cooldown. We'll see... Whether he tries to... Uh... I think you might just maybe ignore Flame Guard entirely in this situation, but that's still going to be kind of risky. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, talk top lane as long as the uh, <laughs> bottom's not putting too much into each other. You can see uh, Sunlight end up getting the Quelling Blade here on the Marana. You're playing against okay. a tree and protector. You want to be able to cut trees over by the side lane where the tree wants to uh, come from. Or to lower his HP regen, slow him down. Taro looks like he might just drop here, but Leech Seed is going to keep him topped up. Flea might actually be the one to go down. Yeah, Cat you. He is very, very slow, but he hits damn hard with that 96 attack damage. And first blood goes to Infamous. And now, does he have. Yeah, now he has a point in the living armor. So, I don't think you're going to get quite as close a call the next time around onto that TB, which is part of the reason why Cringe Crew tried for it, but Leech Seed plus Stick was just enough. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult playing any melee heroes into uh, the train protector lane. Anytime you try to trade, like I was talking about earlier, you just drop the leech seed onto him, the healing is massive, and they can turn things around on you pretty quickly. Got huge base damage on the tree. Uh, Warden actually uh, ends up going down here. Not good. I thought this Ricky lane might be one of the few things that goes their way this game. I think, yeah, Sladen just kind of hit him up with a shackle, and then that level 2 combo from the Dawnbreaker. Always, it's always kind of funny. It takes people by surprise, but she hits level two, she's gonna at least try for that play pretty much every time and just kinda comes at you too fast. Mm. Two protector is 
regularly dropping his uh, living armor on the uh, the terabyte up in the top lane, regardless of the fact that he's like sitting at nearly full HP rather than dropping it the house guard in the mid lane. So they figure that uh, Sebast is going to be just fine over here. That would be one more thing to give the, the house guard advantage over the Ember Spirit near the levels, just to constantly heal from living armor. But they seem to think that he doesn't even need that, and I don't necessarily disagree. He's like sitting at such low HP, but you know, this is just going to increase the effect of Berserker's blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think he knows right now the damage is just so periodic out of Sooths, right? There's no threat of him just charging in now without sight of fist, so. Yeah. He can sit, he can heal, he's got enough to sort of wait out the next one. He's sitting on a fairy fire just in case. Yeah, tries to steer any chains him, but he's not really under any threat. Even if he tries to walk at him after he gets to steer any chains off, you can knock him back with inner fire, and he's got a fairy fire to work with as well. And this is really going to swing things in Sebastian's favor. Helm of Iron Will now comes out. He's got the extra oh, man. Uh, six points of armor. This Slight of Fist is going to do a fraction of what it was doing before. Maybe that's part of the reason why, too. He's saying, I don't need the armor from, from the living armor. I've got this helm coming out in, like, 30 seconds, so... Yeah. He's just fine. Water runes. Slayton ends up denying the water runes from uh, Sid, so now he's going to have almost no mana to work with here as well. Nice play from Slayton. That left his offlaner alone for a sec, but Oscar... Uh, he doesn't have too much to worry about, because the Warden at level 2 actually doesn't have a point in the Frostbite, so without the root, Oscar just quite literally walks away from any initiation onto him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. Hate to see it. Yeah. Uh, the warden will get up there eventually, and look, look at all the mangoes he's holding on to. He knows what's up. Once he hits that ability, he is going to try to be obnoxious. But for now, doesn't have the opportunity. Up in the top lane, though, Kataro, uh popped the meta. They're trying to make something happen here. If they don't get the fight, he can at least clean up this creep wave pretty easily. But this is the downside. Other than Cat, you may be hitting up with a slower route. There's not much to work with here lockdown-wise. Yeah, I mean, they can trade with people. The Terrorblade's going to make himself hard to kill, but the is actually going to have to The arrow, if you can't, you don't have an arrow. If you don't have an arrow, you're not going to find this kill. Warden goes down top, or sorry, bottom, and... Taro's and still tracking. Goes... Yeah. Leap. Patrice grasps. Not actually enough. Cat you now in a little bit of trouble. Kataro lost his meta. Game. There's going to be the rebound. Does he pop the stick now? Yeah. Does he try to hold? Oh my god. He is baiting the hell out of this. Now they get the wand, or the stick in rather, but Kataro still gets hit by that level 2 Star Storm. The arrow, though, doesn't connect. Boys, somebody's got to die. There we go. Flea is the one to go down. It looks like Sunlight may die as well off of the slow. Kataro picks up the double. Oscar, meanwhile, finds the kill. Then Sebas gets the kill mid. Everyone's just dying across the map, including... Sebas himself as the Warden finally comes over to stop him, but... It is a slaughter all over the map, though. <laughs> it's just... Bringing the sword oh, to man. him. Uh, Kitaro bade the hell out of them there. It was, like, incredibly close. They're threading the needle there for sure. Like, the Leech Seed heals coming out of Kitaro definitely played a major part of uh, him surviving all that, as well as him, like, baiting the wand as long as possible. Lee now Ooh. being heavily punished, but they do manage to get the kill on the Kitaro. Lee does drop, but... Losing a carry, definitely not good. Uh, mm -hmm. Now in the mid lane, we see Slayton trying to wrap around here on suit. Still doesn't have his ultimate available. So if you're going to try to find a kill onto him, it needs to be now. Once the Shaco shot angle. Oh, oh, he just used Slight. No, That's a problem. There's going to be the Shackle. Power shot in. Sebas can just hack away and... Well, bottom? Yeah, bottom lane. Are they going on to Oscar? Yes, they are. Can they actually kill him? To be determined, but I think they've got him. One more hit. Goes the way of forward in. Not the most ideal person to grab the kill, but at this point they need anything they can get because the pace that uh, Infamous are putting together is a little bit concerning, right? Nine kills in seven minutes on their side, so Fringe Crew just needed kills. Doesn't matter who gets them. Yeah. Armlet now completed on uh, Huskar. He can move over to this uh, big stack camp over here. Clear this one out. Speed things up for him even more. <laughs> Again, you need a lot of items to be able to fight into uh, the infamous heroes. I, I feel like no matter what suits gets, he's just going to struggle to burst people down. Like, it needs to be this Ricky having an amazing game. Unfortunately for him, he is not. And the only reason he's not the lowest net worth core is because the Ember Spirit is currently holding that spot, so... 
Not ideal at this point. Ooh, we got the Lance of Pursuit, though. That's one of the best rookie items. Not a bad pickup. This is a bit unfortunate, though. The Mirana, yeah. You either die to a hero or you die to a tower. Katara's going to be the one to get the credit, and... Well, we're eight minutes in, so... Can't really fully make that conclusion just yet, but so far enough, I have not really seen the advantage of this position three Mirana. Yeah, I ain't seeing it either. A lot of things aren't going so hot for them. Well, they might get Oscar in the bottom lane. That'd be okay. something. They're trying. It's taking a while, They though. are failing. Oh, this is not no. good. This is very not good. Lee taken down. Warden dropping low as well. Sebas, though, got into the middle of this, but look at the attack damage he's putting out. Realm, are you sure about you this? You can't kill him. You can't no, do it. No. You don't have the damage. Arblet toggle keeps Sebas alive. He picks up three kills in the bottom lane. Suits is here. On top of the oh, armor. no, you don't want to be in this. You just can't hurt him. Look at him. He's got, like, plus 20 armor right now. And, like, he tries to hit him with a sleight of fist. It does, like, 50 damage. Mm -hmm. And he's... Okay, it's not quite max, but he's at level 3 on that sleight of fist as well, and it just tickles onto the Huskar. Uh, yeah. Maybe they can get this kill on the Kataro top. They've got what's going to be a 3v1 with Realm coming in. Does he have Sunder? No, he doesn't. Okay. Get something elsewhere on the map, but that bottom lane is just, at this point, unsalvageable. Yeah, silver lining, if nothing else. Bottom lane is, uh, yeah, an absolute disaster, but you get a little bit of money there on the Ricky finding that kill. Thankfully, it did go his way. Sooth's just picked up, like, three bounty runes there. What is it with this spot? That's twice now in the Pro Series. We've just ignored this rune spawn. Dead area of the map. Uh, where's your map changes, Valve? Fix it. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah nobody nobody ever hangs out there. Well, the Dire team's winning, it just feels like they never farm inside their own jungle. Meanwhile, Katyu, yeah, he showed himself. He is going to pop the Overgrowth, but it didn't actually hit Realm. He was still in tricks of the trade at the time. Flea, that's a very nice rebound to actually hit up onto that tree end, and he should be going down here. They they will find just before pick. he dies, he drops the living armor onto his tower, though. One last middle finger as he goes down. <laughs> it's going to help keep the tower alive, because Realm... He's got the orb, right? So he can he can do a little bit here, but his creep wave is going to die pretty quickly, especially with the... Excuse me, with the glyph being popped at the same time down bot. Uh, Sunlight needs help. He is in some trouble, trying to stay in the trees. He is going to pop the arrow onto Oscar, but there's going to be the shackle into the power shot. Still not enough damage, though, and... Yeah, they are going to get punished. An overextension. Slayton goes down first. Oscar Vols as well. Kataro did get the tower, but now he's stuck in the middle. Since mm, three uh, kills going their way. Not bad. I mean, if nothing else, XP recovery is happening right now. Sure, the is right. far on the other side of the map. He's getting really close to a Heavens... Why is he building a Heavens Halber? I mean, it's just like a good item on this hero, but... Yeah, I think I'd for, probably really? rather see... Uh, BKB is like your first item this game. I mean, I guess... You do have to be a little bit concerned about, like, see him maxing out Frostbite and dropping that on you, uh, like, right after you, you drop your life break. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, he's so far ahead right now that it, it might not matter too much, but... Feels like it's not a necessity in the build, but hey. Zepis is uh, gonna be just trying to keep himself as safe as possible. In the meantime, Realm going for the Diffusal as that sort of first major pickup, so... Damage, mana burn, the inhibit as well, maybe reducing some of the maneuverability from the infamous cores. Yeah, I mean, choice. getting that off under the Huskar, keeping him underneath uh, the smoke, he's not, not able to trade with anyone all of a sudden. Smoke probably needs to be maxed out next instead of tricks of the trade. Like, we're getting to the point that 30% miss rate, the Huskar is just going to stand underneath that and trade with you. You definitely need the 75%. Yeah, he's got one point up in it now, but as you said, maybe he'll uh, focus less on the tricks of the trade as there's a jump in mid. They're going to look for Slayton. Dispose. Didn't pull him into the river, though, but they actually see Sebas over on the other side. They want that kill instead, but here comes the Sword Guardian. Oscar into the fight. Sebas, yeah, now going to start to dish out the damage. They take down the Warden. Oh he's going to life break they in onto him. him. Life break helps him dodge the arrow. Realm can't do the damage himself, and Oscar... Thought for a moment maybe he was gonna try for that play under the tier one, but he will back what off. What is he doing? Can he do Roshan right now? Is he trying? He is trying. I, I mean, Sebast God Gamer, I'm not gonna question him. If he says he can do Roshan, I'm inclined to believe him here, but he doesn't have uh, life steal. Mm. All he's got is a possessed mask, which is uh, heal on attack, not really life steal. 
Uh, so, oh, suits, okay. Jumping away, but I think now maybe he suspects that this rush attempt is happening. The problem is, I'm not sure they have the manpower to do anything about it. Realm is coming over. Maybe drop the smoke screen, but at this point it's too late. Roche is already going down. Oh, maybe it's not. They are able to get in, but Sebus does grab the Aegis. Suits gets stunned. Suits gets taken down. Mm. I like the instinct, Neff. It's just the timing is a little bit off, and now they're even further behind. And honestly, Sebus, as you said, if he says he can do it, you got to trust him, and he was able to do it. Yeah, I think he's just going from bad to worse here. I mean, the mic of the Dawnbreaker, but here comes Sebas again. As soon as he gets a dunk off onto one of these heroes, there it is. Oh! Okay. Blue Knight Shadow into the jump. They can't... I mean, they can't go back in. Realm has no health. That arrow is... Well, ambitious. But now with Zeus back in, maybe they want to try this? Ah... Uh, it just feels so iffy, even if they do pull the trigger here. They are trying to get onto Slayton. They'll root him up. But now Realm has revealed himself. Yeah, immediately Blink strikes away. Rebound, though. Took Flea all the way into the river, but there's going to be the overgrowth. Catching out multiple heroes. Sebas might actually lose his first life, maybe. But he's still doing so much damage, even if he does he's go down. Go down. <laughs> oh my god, they finally get through the first life. But now, who's in fighting position here? Seuss is going to try. Yeah, and I think after that one, Sebas is probably going to queue up a BKB. I mean, he's probably feeling the, the fact that he's getting run around there. Yeah, a second Ogre Act now in his inventory. There's no way that's okay. not what that one's being turned into. Right. The Heaven's Halberd has given him a lot of extra HP regen. Don't get me wrong. Like, that amp is huge. The Disarm and Evasion also pretty nice, but a BKB definitely necessary so you don't get kited around like that one. He just couldn't get his hands on anyone, you know? He's got his arms out like he wants to wrap them around one of these people's necks, but... They couldn't clamp down on him. Just gotta look weird when you make that motion, but you're not actually hitting anybody. <laughs> As ooh, they did dust. Uh, oh, it did actually clip realm. I thought he had gotten out of it. So yeah, they see him. Fortunately, they don't have any other detection after this. So once he's out of this dust, that's that. Unless he wanders back into this century, but he is steering clear of it for now. Meanwhile, middle lane, Suits was jumped in on momentarily, but he was able to get himself out of there. That might be yeah. something for Sebes to look at. Get himself the uh, the Aghanim Scepter for the taunt so that Seuss can't make that jump. Or the Ricky, for that matter. They both have the, the ability to jump away. Uh, Aghanim Scepter kind of a long ways away. The Warden... <laughs> that's That sucks. Gets hit up by the stun. There's a TB with meta on the high ground. That's just a quick and easy kill. Yeah, but now uh, I think they're probably going to be able to, to shove into the... I, uh, hold on. I changed my mind. Hmm. Uh, I was just about to say I think they should take this tier 1 tower, but they have enough kiting potential to, to give Sebast the runaround without his BKB. I think you should be a little bit careful. Oh, they just got overgrowth though on to Zeus. Can they take yeah, him down? Yeah, they too far from their tower. <laughs> yeah. Under the tower, that's uh, that's a tough one. But that far out in the river by yourself, they do manage to get him. That's going to be the tier one for free. Sladen, uh, did he actually see Flea here? He was moving like he did, but I guess is the wrong way. So, All right, so Sebast disagrees with me. He doesn't need a BKB. He bought the, the Overax. He's thinking about it for a second maybe, but he buys the point booster now. So Manchin's going into an Aghanim Scepter. Oh, okay. Well... He could change his mind again. Uh. I mean, listen, if you have the eggs and you get the taunt, then whoever you hit isn't going to be able right, to kite around you as easily. So it is kind of a solution to the problem that we were talking about, but it's a much more expensive solution. Yeah. It's not that much more expensive than a BKB, I guess, but whatever. Sebas goes for whatever he wants here, and... He's cracked the 10k net worth mark already. He's out farming his own terror blade, so feels like he can kind of get away with it. Yeah. Don't break out farming all the enemy boys. Well, Marana's actually the most farmed uh, person on the enemy team, and mm. she right now has uh, an MKB queued up. I mean, I suppose she just wanted for the extra damage, the life steal, the sorry, not the life steal, the uh, the evasion the Husker has off of the seventh halberd. The evasion that uh, maybe the terror blade is going to have he ends up building himself a butterfly and wind ranger actually kill these heroes from a tourist it's tp in a way 
Yeah. Okay. Be able to get himself out of trouble. Meanwhile, Oscar has been spotted. Long arms coming in. Uh, do they really have enough damage, though? Oscar is not easy to kill here with the Wraith Pack, so they throw the totem down. Now they get the disarm onto Ricky. It's time to back away. Multiple bounty runes spawning up top again, because, again, nobody ever watches it. But now they want the kills. The Warden has been spotted out. They dusted just in case Realm was still nearby, but no such luck. But Oscar lives. They find the kill. Momentum remains firmly in Infamous's hands. Hmm. We supposed to use uh, inner fire there to steal the kill. Hmm. How do you feel about that? Eh. Starting to starting to feel like at this point, Sebas just says, "I want that," and then the rest of the <laughs> team just says, that? "Yeah," and then just has it. <laughs> no one else on the team is really able to say anything. They're just like, "All right, fine. I guess he has that." Meanwhile, Cat is trying to do some sneaky stuff here. He was scanned out, but they're still trying to take the tower. They will get it, and they get the silence down actually. So Cat, you wasn't able to pop the oh, oh, pop the overgrowth. He could try and go for it now. No, he can't because he's disposed back in. But they actually aren't killing. <laughs> they're not killing the tree. They were all just kind of running around him, but nobody was hitting him. I mean, between the healing up that he's getting from a uh, leech seed, the, the right pack totem on the ground, he's like clicking them and healing back up as well. They just weren't doing damage. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for him to leave. Uh, Huskar, speaking of uh, things that he wants and things that he's got, he finished up his egg and him scepter just a moment ago. Mm. Bag's picked up. Life break has taunt on it now for three seconds. That's it's gonna kill basically anyone. Uh oh, suits just got rooted, just got stunned. Oscar, I mean Oscar, wasn't even really necessary there. They still have the damage and for suits, he shows up. He had a shiny new desolator. You know, that's, that's so much potential damage if you can hit someone, but that kind of is the problem, isn't it? As Sebas, speaking of problems, shows off his shiny that's... new Aghanim Scepter. That yeah, coming into play there, Ricky. Never stood a chance, unfortunately, especially not getting those backstabs off anymore. Speaking of him, he's got the Aghanim Scepter queued up uh, for the Ricky, but uh, I'm not sure if this thing's even completed before the game ends. I mean, they're shoving tier twos now. There's very little that's going to off from doing that grab the tears of tears move back get the double damage and roshan respawns they take that as well and then i think they just push high ground after hmm. actually tb moves back uh to farm out the wave that's at his tower rather than taking this tier two but no. they're gonna go in with this dd on the husk car well, who do they find they want suits first shackle doesn't really connect life break oh, though still he ends up dodging wait a second yeah Okay, now Sebus is all of a sudden a little bit far forward. Force Staff, though, is going to get him away to safety, or maybe not. Flea jumps in with the rebound. They get the stun, but there's the inner fire pushing everyone away. They still get the root down, though, but can they kill him? Sebus, the man refuses to die, but eventually they will break through. Sebus dead now. Kataro kind of wishing he hadn't TP'd away, because... I mean, Neff, if, if he's there, that fight isn't really possible. His damage is completely ruins them although with the fight still going kataro is going to have his chance to join he's got himself a scotty and yeah he's slowing seuss up just enough to find the kill realm at least was able to get away but if you're cringe crew i think you still have to be happy with that right the alternative was your tier twos and potentially your base getting hit up at least now you've bought some time yeah and that is a lot of gold going the Marana's way after finding that one uh mm -hmm. i mean she i think she completed her mkb just before that last fight now she almost has the dragon lands completed net, uh two then third on the network managed to overtake the dawnbreaker after that last fight so losing huskar there is a pretty big deal definitely went uh, too far forward there and that, that's the worst part right so his life break gets its range extended because of the movement and then once he lands he doesn't actually get the taunt because the ember was able to dodge it so yeah it was a super sick dodge there he hit him while he was in the invulnerable phase of uh the fire remnant there sladen walking uh oh walking away realm i don't know if this is really a good idea yeah he's gonna try and just blink strike away he wanted to try and get that rune. A regen would have been nice for him as well, considering he's at half HP, but not worth dying for. Roche could have respawned another five seconds here. Sebas, he might get his timing just perfect walking into the pit. Oh, oh. Yes, Sebas, go I back. Believe the... Go back. Oh, they're looking for the I fight I believe instead. they saw it, but yeah, they want to chase. Suits is able to jump away. No HP, though. Even with the bottle, I don't know if he's going to be ready to fight this immediately as Oscar... 
eh, tried to go in. Got the Agnum Shard there as well, so there's really not much of a threat while he's in the Starbreaker, but not able to make a connection. Maybe they didn't see the Roshan responding. Maybe it was just like just a fraction of a second after they left the pit. It was so close, man. At this point, I look back and scouted it again. Yeah, somebody go in, maybe send Sladen with the power shot, something. The cat you is going to scout it out, so. They know Roche is back up, but they might have another fight on their hands. Pushing their Rookie way forward. Taunted. They've got the overgrowth, getting up on some multiple heroes. Can they finish them off, though? Yes, they can. Realm will fall, flee dead as well. They're going to now track onto suits. Does he have any remnants? Uh, he has one down, but it's not very helpful. He could throw out oh, another he's one. Taunted. But he's taunted up. As you said, they take him down. Flea's going to buy back, but without the two main damage dealers, Flea's presence here isn't going to matter. He's just going to die back. It's a triple kill for Oscar. Maybe Sunlight's caught here, too. He's got a leap charge up in one second. The Warden's going to try and force staff him, but a force staff onto Oscar is going to get keep him right on top. He star breaks him just as the leap was coming in. Now they get the taunt from... Oh, from Sebas, and they will track the kill down, and the Warden, uh, he did literally everything that he could. He slowed him, he rooted him, he forced staff a teammate, but it still wasn't enough. Uh, I mean, it was very unfortunate. He held that uh, last leap just a moment too long. Starbreaker is one of like, the few abilities that not only stuns you, but also like throws you off on your Z-axis. So that kind of thing interrupts the leap. Combination of the stun and being tossed up in the air just a little bit. What if you're tossed up in the air like that, it interrupts... Uh, what, what Leap is in the middle of doing, so uh, end up jumping forward like 50 range before getting stunned and held in the place there. And now the move straight into Roshan. Yep. They just should after go this, their way. Ooh. Yeah, the Huskar gets the BKB after this one. He's finally decided he's getting kited around a little bit too much. <laughs> like the CM is being a pretty big issue for him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be able to pick that up. Already made space for the Aegis. We'll see if he takes the shard too. Yes, he will. He wants it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sebas again points and says, I want that. Everyone <laughs> gives it to him. I mean, the inner, up, uh, the inner fire upgrade is pretty useful. Between that and the Scotty that Katara's been sitting on for like 10 minutes now, it seems. If you're into the fight and you're somehow not taunted by the actual life break, you're really just not moving anyway. And now, look, they got a feeling that Realm is going to try to cut these waves, and they are absolutely... Ooh. Oh, my God! Slade. The gamer sense by them. He's there dead. Is. There is no way out for the Ricky. Slade. That was such a sick prediction there. That was actually insane. There was absolutely no, like, hint that he was there. Sladen just has the spidey senses tingling. Yeah. I mean, the correct play right there is for Ricky to, like, go out and shove the uh, wave up in top. Because that's where they last saw Huskar. That's where they know that the, the, they want to shove in from. But they, they knew exactly where he was. That was so uh, sick, man. It, oh, he didn't see Sunlight, but he does see Flea. They need, to, they need to just, at this point, maybe pick a target. Because if they split like this, they might let both heroes go. But well, let's see. Sladen is on to Sunlight. Hitting him up. Shackle did not actually latch there, but... Oscar's going to come in. They should be able to finish this kill, but yeah, that means Flea's able to get himself out of trouble. And yeah, BKB now completed on Huskar. He's got the Aegis. He's ready to push the high ground. I don't think there's anything that can stop him, especially not with the Marana down. He's like the only one with maybe enough damage to be able to take down the Huskar. Without that, I don't know what they do. Mm. Well, I mean, they're trying. Right? They're not they're not giving up on the tower defense here, but they're not fully committing either as the Aghanim Scepter was finished off on the Ricky, so he's got the tricks of the trade upgrade. It's not bad, but will it be enough is the question. Tier 3 tower is under attack. Suits is just trying to throw out some sleight of fist plays, but uh, I, I don't really think there's much to slow Infamous down here. The glyph is going to wear off. They're right back in onto the tower. They try to stun up the Huskar. They do manage to get through his first life, but... Well, how, how do you deal with him a second time now? How do you deal with Katara behind him? How do you deal with Katyu and the overgrowth potentially coming in? As Oscar actually makes the jump first, they're going to get the Solar Guardian down. That stuns up the Ricky. They're going to dust him as well. So he has to try and find some way out of this. Does manage to blink strike away to a teammate, but it's just not going to be enough to matter. Seuss goes down. Realm will fall as well. Buyback from the Ember Spirit. He's trying to rejoin this fight, but his teammates are just falling too fast. Flea gets taken down. There's no buyback available on that Marcy, and the base is just really completely broken now. Yeah. They split up, uh, grabbing two racks at the same time. I mean, the only thing is to keep the, the tier three and the racks in the bottom line alive. The fact that tier two is still standing. 
they have to go back and shove that if they want to get it, but <laughs> they're not getting back. They're just diving the fountain. Oh, boy. Gale Force now coming into effect from Sladen, so they can't even really get back safely. And there it is. The GG will be called Infamous. Oh, they played like a team on a mission here today, Neff. Back-to-back wins, and they look pretty dominant in both. Yeah, I mean, uh, 24 pick Huskar. <laughs> they don't play for respect for the viewers or for their enemy. They're playing to win here. It, it looked damn good, I gotta say. Like, kill after kill on Sebas. The lanes, they ended up just destroying all of them as well. Like, uh, around like the, what, five, six minute mark, we saw deaths in every single lane. The only person that came on top was like the warden rotating mid and finding the Huskar after he had already killed Suits. It was just like a disgusting gameplay here by Infamous. Mm -hmm. Super well coordinated, awesome hero picks coming out from them. Uh, really punished them. It never felt like they had enough damage to take anybody down. Like, they never kill Sebas. They could never kill Kataro. This game was just hard. They yeah. made it hard with their drafts. Just lacking damage at a certain point. Maybe even lacking some lockdown once, uh, once the items came through. And... I just, I don't know, Infamous just really kind of had their number, right? Even from the draft, it was good. The execution, once they were actually into the game, was spectacular. Other than that one fight where Sebes was getting kited around, but he very quickly found the answer with both the BKB and the Aghanim Scepter. So that was really the only road bump they hit, and it didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. well, congratulations uh, to Infamous uh, moving forward here. I believe you said that this makes them qualified for uh, Phase 2 here. Mm -hmm. Another SA team representative. It's uh, looking a little sparse for the NA teams, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, as of right now, in Phase 2, we have Wildcard as an NA team. And that's it. That's the list. Uh, <laughs> all the other teams are SA. Of course, there are only four teams right now in Phase 2. Infamous now make it five. So there are three slots still available. Some NA teams uh, could grab a hold of those. In fact, an NA team will grab a hold of at least one of them because the three teams uh, now left here in Group A are all North America. So, the Cut, Alpha, and Cringe Crew, one of those three will be claiming a spot. So, at least we've got one more NA team guaranteed, Neff. Default win. Default Woo. win. USA. <laughs> USA. Winning by default. That's the US way right there. But, uh, oh. we are going to be moving over to the lower half of the bracket where we will see two of those aforementioned teams uh, in action. It's going to be Alpha versus the Cut in an elimination match. The loser gets knocked out. The winner will face this Cringe Crew squad two days from now, I believe. So we're going to be moving into that series in just a little bit here, just as soon as we get those squads ready to go. So we will be hopping out of here for just a little bit. But on the other side of the break, it will be that Game 1 draft coming your way. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and come on back for the start of that next Best of 3.